issues. He has only one bill before the uh, on the voting list uh, that's that we're passing favorably, and Delegate Love will fill in for him if not, if need be. And uh, you know, I, my attitude with respect to timing, rather than uh, move the well, you know what? Let's discuss it after we vote. Okay, first bill is House Bill 76, um, uh, Delegate Stein. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The subcommittee recommendation is favorable with amendments. As amended, this bill establishes that a person who meets the threshold standing requirements under the Federal Clean Water Act has an unconditional right and the authority to intervene in a civil action initiated by the state in state court to require, to require compliance with specified water pollution control laws, regulations, permits, limits, or orders. Uh, amendment number one makes technical changes to the purpose paragraph. Number two establishes that a person exercising the right to intervene under the bill must comply with the applicable law, procedures, and practices in the state and makes clarifying changes. And amendment number three strikes in irrelevant reference. Move the amendments. Is there a second? Second. 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 Okay. Any discussion on the amendments before we vote? Seeing none, we will vote on the amendments. All those in favor signify saying aye, oppose, no, the aye seem to have it, the aye. The bills before us is amended. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, any discussion on any, thank you. Any discussion on the bill as amended? Okay, seeing none, we'll start this off with a roll call just to be sure we know who all is here. Roll call. Uh, Vice Chair Stein. Yes. Holmes? Yes. Learman? Brooke? Yes. Yes. Sorry. I was muted. Yes. Fraser Hidalgo? Excused. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Otto? No. Uh, Jacob? No. Weibel. No. That was a no. Right. Amity. Yes. Syllabarity. Oh, you're muted, Barry. B Barry, you're you're still muted. Okay. There you go. Negative. No. Negative. No. Wells. Positive. Love. <laughs> That's yes. A yes. Love. Yes. Ruth. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Layman. Yes. Harrison. Yeah. Yes. Trasa. Yes. Parrot. No. Boyce. Yes. Clark. No. Jalisi. Yes. Anderton. Absent. Yep. No, Andrew. Gilcrest. Yes. Healy. I saw her there somewhere. Delegate Healy. She's there. I'm, I'm muted. Uh, yes. Yes. I'm, I was muted. I didn't realize. And Chairman. Chairman votes yes. Okay, 16 sure. to 6. Who was, who's, ab, who's absent again? Um, well, Fraser Hidalgo is excused and uh, Delegate Anderton right. is absent. Yeah, I was absent okay. on that one. What was the final vote, Mr. Are you, Chairman? Are you, yeah, you're, we haven't called it yet. Uh, Cornbread, you can vote yes or no. Well, what, which one was it? 76. Uh, the first bill, all the other Republicans voted no. 
But it's my bill, I'm Carl. Still absent. I'm still absent. I'll be right back. Okay, you're still absent. Okay. Uh, 105, uh, Delegate Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this bill has a favorable report from the subcommittee with no amendments. This bill requires the Community Development Administration under the DHCD to prepare an annual report on compliance monitoring for low income housing tax credits. Uh, move the bill, Mr. Chair. There are no amendments. Is there a second? Second. Second. second? Okay. Yes. Uh, any discussion on the bill before? Yeah, who would like to speak? Does anybody want to discuss the bill before we vote? Okay, seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Is, is anyone opposed? I'm opposed. Uh, Delegate Parrott is opposed, and uh, any abstentions other than uh, DFH, who has an excused absence? Okay, the bill carries. Uh, House Bill 115, uh, I'm going to call on Delegate Love to explain what this bill does. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, HB 115 was uh, passed out by the subcommittee. Uh, you all may recall that... Um, Last year, we uh, made some changes, I'm trying to find my thing, um, to, uh, now I seem to have lost it. Um, here we go. Uh, it alters the penalty for somebody who displays a canceled, revoked, or dis uh, suspended license. In years past, um, we had made this change, but we hadn't changed it just for someone who displays it. So this is to make the law consistent. And we did make some amendments, striking out some um, extraneous language. So the bill just focuses on uh, display. Right. The uh, committee so basically, report you can't go says, to jail for uh, displaying a canceled or revoked license. Well, it's saying here um, it, it, it strikes certain exceptions. For one, the underlying suspicion, uh, suspension, or revocation is due to violations relating to alcohol or drug related offenses, uh, refusal to submit to a test for intoxication or, uh, or accumulation of points for alcohol or drug related offenses. Pretty, so on the amendment, is there a second? Somebody, I, I second. know you're out second. there. Second, 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 second. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll proceed, to any discussion on the amendment? Before? Okay, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Uh, nobody appears to be opposed. So the bill is before us is amended. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Boy, our internet's not doing well today, is it? It's not. Okay, it really all isn't. those. It really um, it's not. I'm getting a lot of messages. Really so you know if what? something what? drops, we're going to just have to try again. Right. Well, you know what? Let's just to be on the safe side, let's do a roll call vote on this. Okay, Trish? Can you tell me the bill number again? 115. Uh, it is, uh, yeah, 115. Roll call. Uh, Vice Chair Stein? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Lehrman? Yes. Frazier still gone? <clears throat> yeah. Used. Otto? Yes. Jacobs? Yes. Weibel? Yes. Ampre. Yes. Silberti. Yes. Wells. Yes. Yes. Love. Yes. Ruth. Yes. Stewart. Yes. That's a yes. Layman. Yes. Layman. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Teresa. Yes. 
Parrot. Yes. Boyce. Yes. Clark. Jerry. Yes. He's frozen. He's yes. Delisi. Yes. Anderton still absent? Nope, he's present. Yes, yes, yes. Gilcrest? Yes. Healy? Yes. Chairman? Chairman votes yes. The bill ca uh, carries unanimously among those present. House Bill 225, Delegate Gilchrist. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 225 expands Sunday hunting in Queen Anne's County by authorizing DNR to allow a person to hunt any game, bird, or mammal on private property during the open season for that game, bird, or mammal. The uh, subcommittee motion is favorable. Move the bill. Second. And there is a second. Uh, any discussion on House Bill 225, Delegate Love? Uh, yes, thank you, <laughs> Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. Um, members, I, um, I'm going to uh, vote against this bill, and I encourage you to, or I urge you to join me. Um, we received a lot of written testimony from um, people who live in Queen Anne's County, who are equestrians, um, who talked about, you know, they need some time, just some time to be able to ride without fear of hunters. And, you know, we heard testimony that, you know, bullets don't respect boundaries. And, you know, I, I am a former equestrian. The horses are scared of that sound. So there is that the horses will rear, they will take off. Um, it is a terrifying sound. So there is that safety concern. There is the bullet safety concern. And they're not asking for a whole lot. They are just asking for one day when they can ride in peace. And it's not just riders, it's other people out there who you know want to take walks, want to go birding, want to do whatever. Um, and we keep seeing these bills that are trying to take away that one day of other people who want to enjoy outdoor spaces. And one of the things that really struck me is that for years, um, the Horse Council and others fought back and defeated statewide bills to take away this one day. And why did they do that? Because they were they were right, and a majority of um, of uh, Marylanders, um, sorry, I'm getting another call, side with them. So, in a statewide Gonzalez poll, 68.9 percent of respondents oppose Sunday hunting. So, they were able to feed it in a statewide um, bill on multiple occasions because people understand that you know, hunters can't have every day, all day. That's just not fair to everyone else. But now we're in this situation of, you know, local courtesy. So they're breaking it down um, jurisdiction by jurisdiction and the equestrians are losing as are the birders, as are the hikers, as are everyone else. So I am going to oppose this and I understand the concept of, you know, local courtesy, but a lot of those that we heard of are in rural Maryland, are in Queen Anne's County, and they oppose it as well. So um, I just, I find this very frustrating that we keep running up against this. And I encourage my colleagues to join me in opposing this bill. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Um, well, I've got a lot of people who have their hands raised. I'm gonna allow the subcommittee chair to speak and then I'm gonna go through all the people in the order in which their hands are up. So, um, uh, Delegate Gilchrist, go ahead um, and then I'll 
you know, as Jaleesi, Otto, Harrison, and Anderton in that order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this committee has, of course, hunting in its jurisdiction, and we've been working on this, uh, of course, for years. The, you'll see in the fiscal note, Allegheny, Cecil, Garrett, St. Mary's, Washington already allow um, uh, game bird and mammal uh, hunting on Sunday, uh, DNR's authorization. So this county, Queen Anne's, is basically adding themselves to the list and it is a local bill. Uh, each county is handling it separately. Uh, Montgomery County handled it differently. A lot of counties are doing it differently. Uh, this is a local bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Delegate Jalisi, Otto, Harrison, Anderson, Jacobs, and Ruth in that order. Jay Jalisi. I, I think that um, um, uh, Gil Gilchrist answered my question. I was just trying to clarify if this is a local bill. Um, and I understand if it's a local bill, then the local delegation has submitted a, a letter of support, right? Yep, that's the rule. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Delegate Otto. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think we had lengthy discussion about the deer damage and uh, crop damage problems that we have throughout the state uh, yesterday uh, in another hearing on another bill. And uh, I think that's already been vetted. Uh, this is a local bill concerning uh, Queen Anne's County. It's been vetted through the county commissioners and and through the local government and, uh, and the uh, citizens of the county have input on it. Uh, uh, I think it's a no brainer. Thank you. Okay, Delegate Anderton. Yes, sir. Uh, all right, yeah, so not to reiterate, but you know, if we're gonna use local courtesy, then let's use it. Otherwise we just get rid of it altogether. And I don't think we want to do that. Uh, you know, hunting, you know, I heard uh, hunting all day. Nobody hunts all day. That, that, that just doesn't happen. If you're hunting waterfowl, there's no horses near waterfowl unless you're in Chincoteague, you know. Um, you know, it, to me, I, I dealt with this a couple of years ago when we did an expansion extension for Wicomico County. So I had to constantly debunk the the theories of, of uh, our equestrian, equestrian friends, um, you know, that uh, unless they're riding at four o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning, they don't really have a whole lot to worry about. You're, you're done hunting before 10 a.m. Uh, so it's not really, a, it's, it's not really the issue it's made out to be. But, but again, you know, I mean, if the council has asked for this and the delegation supports it and the Senate, Senate delegation supports it, then you know, I, I think the play's been called and we just need to run it. Okay, Delegate Jacobs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, this, this bill was fully vetted through the county. Uh, all five commissioners voted for it. This is a private property hunting, uh, land hunting bill only. It's not on public land. So it's private property rights. And this does not include migratory birds. This is game birds and animals, mammals. It's not geese and ducks, anything migratory. But uh, I think the bottom line in this, it's a, it's a local bill. It was fully vetted. And, uh, you know, I fully support the bill. Yeah. Delegate Ruth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I voted no on this in subcommittee and I will be joining um, Delegate Love voting no for it now um, for the reasons she so eloquently stated. I understand that it's a local bill, but from the testimony we received, it clearly does not speak for everybody in Kansas County. And, um, you know, I, I think that we have a, a responsibility to ensure that we're doing the best we can for, for the people. And so I will be voting no. Thank you. Delegate Lehman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I also voted against the bill in subcommittee. I will be voting against it again as well. As far as local courtesy goes, I know what that means. I know that there is that tradition in Annapolis, but there are always exceptions to that. Uh, I had a local bill 
Um, a number of years ago when I was on the county council, it was supported by my county exec and the old uh, environmental matter matters committee still voted it down. So. Okay, any further discussion on the, con uh, on the, on the bill? Yes. Oh yeah, who? who, who? Uh, Delegate Parrott. Oh, Delegate Parrott, okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was looking at the people who testified on behalf and against the bill, and I haven't seen anything from the Carol, I guess Caroline County um, local officials, like their county commissioners. I would move that we hold the bill until we hear from oh, oh, oh. the county commissioners. This is Queen Anne's County. Queen Anne's Sorry, County. Queen Anne's County. Anne's County. It's We've a different got, county. <laughs> so I'd hold until we hear from the Queen Anne's County. You ain't getting us from Carolina, man. They testified on the bill, Neil. Okay, yeah, they did testify. Okay. I just don't see that in the written testimony. No, there was no. oral. Okay, so the county commissioners have supported this? Yep. Yes, Neil. Five to O. Oh. Well, I'd say that we really do need to honor local courtesy in this case. The, the county commissioner supported it, the delegation supports it, the state senators support it. I mean, it just makes sense that we move forward then. Well, we certainly uh, honor local courtesy, except in those instances when we don't. So um, <laughs> that's right. Any, uh, delegate Love. Actually, Mr. Chair, I was going to say that for all of you who are talking about local courtesy, um, I look forward to, to some of your votes later this session. Oh, OK. <laughs> OK. Uh, any further uh, debate or discussion on the bill before we proceed to a vote? Okay, we will proceed to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Who, who all is against the bill? Okay. So Delegate Ruth, Delegate Lehman, Delegate Love, hmm. Delegate Carraza. Have I missed anyone? If that's all, uh, Ruth, Love, Lehman, Terraza, if that's it, then the bill, um, the bill passes. Any abstentions, by the way? No? Okay, bill passes. House Bill 281, um, Delegate Learman. No, sorry, uh, different L, uh, Delegate Healy. <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. I saw uh, the L. This is local government and bi-county agencies, and we have actually a House Bill 281 was uh, passed by the subcommittee with um, favorable with amendments that will conform it to be identical with the Senate Bill 159, which passed out of the Senate 47 to zero. What the bill, uh, as amended, the bill requires a new officer of a humane society or animal control to satisfactorily complete at least 80 hours of training for animal care and control professionals within the first 12 months of employment. The bill also um, requires, and I'm trying to read this on my phone, hold on a second. See, it's a little well, small. Take your time. Um, it requires the officer of the Humane Society uh, to uh, satisfactorily, or animal control, to complete six hours of continuing education every year. Training required must include certain instruction as outlined in the bill. Move the amendments. Second. Is there, um, okay. Any discussion on the- Second. Hearing, hearing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor signify saying aye, oppose no, the ayes seem to have the ayes have it. The bills before us is amended. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Well, I heard that. Uh, any discussion on the bill? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Delegate Parrott. Thank you. Um, I guess I just have a question. I see they're asking for 80 hours of training. I see that the people who are in the field say they want the training. Um, obviously, we haven't had this before. I mean, it seems like this is just trying to keep people really out of serving. I, I mean, 80 hours, it's like two full weeks. I mean, is there any reason why we really need to have this? 
Um, the, lo the local, oh, go ahead, uh, Delegate Healy. Well, this, um, this is an issue that has come up before. We have seen legislation like this before, um, but this, this year it, it was amended to match the Senate, which passed unanimously. So we took a very close look at it. The issue is about um, having somebody who is trained to decide um, whether an animal is being neglected or abused. Uh, it's not just the old fashioned, you know, dog catcher like they had in the cartoons. This is, they need to have some training to be able to understand animals and how they're being treated and also to understand the law. So um, there are exceptions for these uh, people that are part-time for small uh, organiz small municipalities that may not have a full-time animal control officer. Uh, so, you know, and it's just an opportunity for the animals to get the kind of um, protection of the law that we really want them to have. And this is Everybody, a local, okay. and this is Thank a local you. thing. It's not one county, it's all across the state. Right, but this has to do with, um, oh, is this, um, no, but this has to do with Anne Arundel, right? Not just Anne Arundel, it, 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 it is, it's a okay. statewide bill. Okay, but it, all right. It's, it's for any local county or local government that has animal control officers or the Humane Society, that they want people who are trained so that they uh, they don't get themselves hurt or somebody else or the animal is not um, neglected. Okay. Uh, Delegate Parrott, do you uh, have anything else? No, thank you. The delegate offered a great explanation. Thank you. And I'm gonna support the bill. Okay, Delegate Harrison, then Delegate Jalisi in that order. Thank you. I was just going to say and, and clarify that it's not 80 hours that an individual has to take off at one time. I believe that it's 80 hours over a period of time. Is that correct? It's over a year in, in, the, in the first year after they're employed so that they know what they're doing. So they, they could take, you know, four hours here, four hours there, six hours there, just like all the other professions that have to have continuing education for. Mm -hmm. okay. And after their original, after they get their 80 hours, if they go to work for somebody else, they won't need to have it all over again. Once they get training, they will just have to maintain it with the six hours a, a year after that. And a lot of it's done online. You good, uh, uh, Andrea? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Delegate Jalisi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my question was the same question that I think I asked in the subcommittee. Uh, who's going to pay for it? Because these people are assumed to be the employees of the county governments. Um, is the county government going to pay for it? Or are they going to pay out of pocket? And I think the answer I got from someone was that it's not clear in the bill. And I think that payment portion should be clear in the bill. It, it's not, it, it is not spelled out specifically in the bill. Uh, usually uh, when it's a requirement of employment, the employer does take care of it. The uh, Humane Society does offer, I think, um, either free or very inexpensive training available. So I think there may be options uh, but it's not spelled out specifically in the bill. It's something right. that can just, and if somebody wants to get the training, I'm sure they can get it on their own. I, I understand, but I think that this is gonna create a delay in the implementation of the good intention of the bill. If we don't spell out or we don't amend the bill to specify who's gonna pay for it, then we'll be here a year from now and still you know, not being able to implement the good intentions of the bill. So I think we should do it at this time. Delegate uh, Boy, um, I'm sorry, Delegate Terraza, then Delegate Boyce. Wow. Sorry. Um, to that point, um, Delegate Jalisi, I thought the answer was that it was, and I'm trying to pull up the bill really quickly, but I thought it was that the it was left to the counties to decide. Um, to set up the the required training 
I'm just trying to yes. pull up the bill really. Um, so it wasn't that it was just sort of left completely out there for like, just with no guidance, but that they really wanted the counties to have the freedom to decide what program and how that would work. I mean, they could run their own program, for example. So I think right. right. I, I thought I, the, that question was answered satisfactorily to me during subcommittee. So, the, so basically then you're not mandating this 80 hours. You, you basically, it's more of a suggestion because there's nothing specific you're not specific except for the 80 hours every for every person you're not specifying how it's going to be paid who's going to set it up basically it's, it's more of a suggestion than an implement uh, than a mandate from the state no the 80 hours is uh, only for the state mandate. is that the understanding uh, no. the 80 I mean, hours no. is mandated in the bill how they pay for it is not mandated the, the counties can various ways to do that or the local governments the municipalities if they have an animal control officer well i understand madam chair but we also have not specified that people are not going to have to pay out of pocket that's that's the we haven't specified anything the counties yes. and the local governments are mandated to do it how they pay for it is up to them okay, okay i'm going to go to delegate voice Thank you. It's just more of a isn't it so question. Isn't it so that this is just a bill to professionalize this, um, this service per se? Absolutely, yes. And, and um, isn't it so as a professional, at times you would have to pay for your own professional training to then be a professional? Yep. I, it depends on, I think that could be done, done by your employer or by you. It depends on how it's set up. I guess what I'm trying to get at is that I understand uh, Delegate Julisi's, uh concern that it's not necessarily mandated by funding, but you know, if, if I want education or if I want to better my 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 profession, then this is that's what I do. I I you know, it's I don't think it should be all left up to um, the jurisdiction. If this is something you say you want to do, and there's a requirement, I think you know, one would meet it personally, or if the the jurisdiction decides that there's something they'll pay for, they'll pay for it, but I don't think and it has to be the one. That's right, and if a person who wants to professionalize themselves and pay for it themselves, they'll have a credential that they can market so that if they wanna be, if a local government wants to have, hire somebody who's already had the training so that because then they won't have to provide it, then they can do that too. Okay. Um, oh, Mary Lehman, Delegate Lehman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I guess I need to ask an isn't it so question as well. I did not, um, you know, hear at the beginning, I, I know this bill is back from at least last year. I don't know its prior history um, before that, but, um, you know, I remember the bill from last year and I hear whether Delegate Healy said it was coming in amended, but I just checked and th this is only a two page bill. Isn't that so Delegate Healy? Um, there is not a lot of detail in it. That's right. Right. And, and is, isn't it so that, uh, as, as Delegate Terraza asked, it is um, left up to the counties, although it's a statewide bill and the 80 hours are required statewide, isn't it um, left up to the county to figure out how to schedule that with the employee within their first 12 months of employment? Yes. So in other words, it's it's not prescriptive really at all. Is that accurate? Except for the 80 hours. The only thing that's required is the 80 Except hours of training. 80. Right. And then and then is there still the provision in the bill that every year after that there be six hours of what they call continuing education? Yes, that's that's also there. Thank okay, you. Okay, let's vote. Thank you. All, all those in favor, uh, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Ma Mr. Chair, I'm not opposed, but I don't want to. Hi, Mom. Uh, Jay, what did Mr. you say? Chair. 
I you can mark me absent, excused. I, I don't want to vote for in, in the affirmative. I don't know enough about okay. the bill. Okay. Uh, I mean, I know enough about right, the bill, but I don't know enough about the working. Of appreciate it. How are you feeling, mom? Hey, somebody's talking to their mom, which is great. You That's know, would delicate. Uh, <laughs> mute yourself. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, it's uh, everybody's voting for it except for Delegate Jalisi, who's abstaining, and DFH, who is still excused. We'll go to House Bill 313, Delegate Holmes. Marvin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am so sorry, ladies and gentlemen, uh, about the distraction. Um, I just got my mom out of the hospital, and I'm so uh, sorry. That's okay. Um, You're being a good son. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, uh, House Bill 313, uh, Mr. Chair, was voted favorable uh, with, from the subcommittee with amendments. And as amendment, the bill requires a study of reserve studies needed for uh, major repairs and replacement for common elements in a cooperative, a condominium, and a homeowners association. Um, and there are two amendments, Mr. Chair. Uh, the first amendment is technical, uh, and the second... Oops. And the second amendment, the second amendment, um, Mr. Chair, clarifies the reserve study is to be completed. Uh, the reserve study is for the initial reserve study uh, is it's a complete reserve study, and after that, it's an updated reserve study. Uh, move the amendments, Mr. Chair. Okay. Is there a second for the amendments? Second. Second. All right. Any discussion on the amendments? Seeing. No Proceed to a vote. All those in favor signify saying aye. Opposed, no. The ayes seem to have Move it. The bill is amended, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion on the bill as amended? Can um, the chair describe to me what, after the amendment, what does the bill say? Uh, after the, after the what, amendment. What you have, have, like what does what does it do now with the after the amendment? What's the amended bill's intent? Yeah, me too. After the amendment, the bill yeah. is still in its same posture and still does the exact same thing. Only thing that the amendment does is it specifies that the there is there is to be an initial reserve study, and the a bill the bill was amended because it needs to be clarified that an updated reserve study. Uh, needs to be done every five years. And that's because an updated reserve study is typically less expensive than the initial reserve study. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Any no. opposed? No. Who? Neil Parrott and Will Wyville are opposed. Anybody else? Any abstentions? Okay, so I see Neil Parrott and Will Wyville as opposed. Everyone else, uh, DFH is excused and everyone else is voting in favor. The bill passes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And again, I apologize for the, the, the mom conversation. I really, I'm really oh, sorry. Don't, 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 don't. Yeah, don't worry about that. Okay, House Bill 352, Delegate Home, Delegate Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, House Bill 352, uh, Mr. Chair, um, is, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm so sorry, I'm all just here. Um, here we go, right here, hang, hang on, I'm sorry. House Bill okay. 352, Mr. Chair, is was favorable uh, from the subcommittee <laughs> with amendments. And there are two amendments. The first amendment is technical, and the second amendment clarifies. I'm sorry, there, there, there are more. There are uh, one, two, three. There are five amendments, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the first amendment is technical. Amendments number two and three clarifies language specific to the requirement to add at least one unit or lot owner who is unaffiliated with the developer of a condominium or the declarant of a homeless association, respectively, after a percentage of the units and lots are sold. And amendment number four and five 
alters the notice requirements <clears throat> with regard to bonds held by government. Now, the bill as amended, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, requires Maryland Home requires uh, provisions for the Maryland Condominium Act, the Maryland Homeowners Association Act related to governing body and condominium homeless associations in terms of annual meetings. And the second portion of the bill is notification of bonds to the board of directors. Uh, and in the latter part of the amendments with, uh, where we were talking about bonds, the bill specifies that when the homeless association, when the common ownership community takes over the, um, the, 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 the board, then they have to be notified in terms of where the bonds are held and who holds them. Not that the uh, Common Ownership Community Board can do anything relevant to releasing the bond. It's just a notification process, Mr. Chair. So I move the amendments, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion on the amendments before we proceed to a vote? Seeing none, we will vote on the amendments. All those in favor, signify saying aye, opposed, no, the ayes seem to have the ayes. The bill is amended, Mr. Chair. Is, before us. is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion on the bill as amended? Yeah, if I could just make a comment. Um, I did talk with the sure. bill sponsor. Sure, don't it. Thank you. I did talk with the bill sponsor. Uh, initially, it was thought that the two meeting requirement only applied to those uh, condos and HOAs with uh, that were under development, but it was subsequently found out it applied to all. I, I just don't like the provision of requiring two meetings per year for everyone in the entire state. So I'm going to vote against. If I may reply, Mr. Chair. Sure, sure, Mr. Chairman, go ahead. Th th thank you very much. And I do appreciate uh, the uh, courtesy of uh, Delegate Weibel, my good friend, Delegate Weibel. Uh, I looked at the the bill from last year as well. Uh, the bill from last year did in fact have the two meeting requirements in it. And I also looked at a letter from the attorney general's office from last year and from this year. And one of the suggestions from the attorney general's office was in fact the two meetings, the two meeting requirements, uh, which is why uh, the good delegate like a wife and myself, we have been having these conversations back and forth. And that is why I decided, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the, of the committee, to leave in the two meeting requirement. I appreciate the opportunity. Any further discussion or debate on the bill? Hold on. Can, can you repeat that? Are you leaving into the bill the two meeting requirement or leaving it out? So is it that, going to be? That is correct. That, that, is, that is correct, Delegate Jalasi. The two meeting requirement is staying in the bill. Okay. Two meetings per year two meetings per year is in Thank the you. bill. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's proceed to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uh, Wyville is opposed. Is there anyone else opposed? Yeah, no. I'm opposed. Carrot. Carrot yeah, and Jalisi. Yes. Wyville, Carrot, and, Jal and Jalisi are opposed. DFH is excused, the bill, uh, the bill uh, passes. House Bill 407, Delegate Stein. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The recommendation is favorable with amendments. This bill requires any person, unless exempted, <laughs> who engages in the business of inspecting a septic system must obtain an on-site wastewater property transfer inspection license issued by MDE. Uh, MDE must adopt regulations and establish license eligibility criteria and uh, engage in other activities. The one subcommittee amendment alters the scope of a violation under the bill. Move the amendment. Is there a second on the amendment? Second. Okay, any discussion on the amendment? I just had a question. Yes, go um, ahead. Thank you. I think Doug Stein probably already said this, but does this address the MBIA amendment for plumbers so plumbers wouldn't have to take the training? The, that's a separate bill, delegate. This just deals with property transfer inspectors. Unless there was an MBI amendment, I didn't see for this one, but um, I believe there was a 
separate amendment that uh, with respect to plumbers that was issued for another septic regulation bill. Are you it's good, uh, Parrott? I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Are Chairman. you good? Um, <clears throat> this is um, House Bill 407, is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, so in the written testimony, MBIA did talk about wanting to make sure that master plumbers wouldn't have to take, I guess, get this new license for septic inspection license because they already have the training. Yeah, I hadn't seen that amendment introduced. Um, I would argue against it because the, the types of systems that plumbers deal with are typically different from septic systems. And these are inspectors. Um, and um, so I, I would say that I, I, I would say that that amendment uh, wouldn't be a good one for this bill. Okay, uh, next, Delegate Jacobs. <clears throat> Delegate Stein, in the hearing, there was uh, uh, the uh, conference of environmental health directors had, uh, they, they wanted to, uh, they were favorable with, with amendments. Did you address that issue in your amendments? No, no. The only amendment that we addressed was the scope of a violation under the bill. I believe their amendment. That, that's would've... their amendment. I believe. Oh, is that's their amendment? Oh, okay. Then uh, let me I take it back. I'll have to look. I, I, there, that, hold on. Yes, sir. Actually, it, in your write-up, it does say addresses Maryland Conference of Environmental Health Directors and make the health officer concerned. So, yes, you're correct, Kristen. So, Delegate Jacobs, yes, that their amendment is the amendment that uh, is in the bill. Thank you. Delegate Otto. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think my questions mostly have been answered. But uh, this is just dealing with the uh, property transfer inspections. It's not uh, other. Yes, sir. Uh, right, just those inspectors. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion or questions about the bill? Is everybody okay? Okay, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, who's opposed? Anyone opposed? opposed. Delegate Parrott is opposed. Um, and only Delegate Parrott. Aye. Bill, uh, Pat. Is, is anyone else opposed? Okay, we're, we're good. The bill passes. House Bill 451, Delegate Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. House Bill 451, is favorable with amendments from the subcommittee. And as amended, this bill requires local jurisdictions to require residential rental property inspections to adopt provisions related to remote inspections, remote visual inspections. And there are several amendments, Mr. Chair. Uh, amendment number one is technical. And amendment number two substitutes the term visual for uh, video. Uh, amendment number three, requires an on-site inspection within a reasonable amount of time after the uh, visual inspection has been done before a fine or penalty can be enforced. And uh, amendment number four, Mr. Chair, authorizes local jurisdictions to request technical assistance from the Maryland Department of Labor to implement the uh, provisions in this section. I move the amendments, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, uh, any discussion on the amendments? Delegate Jacobs? Your hand. <clears throat> okay, maybe not. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I think my hand was up from last time, but I would like to ask a question. So I guess it Okay, was go a, ahead. You know. Go ahead. My higher power had my hand up there, I guess. 
Um, uh, okay, we'll does, ask your question. Go ahead. <laughs> do these amendments address Mel's objection? Yes, uh, I'm glad you asked that question. The amendments uh, address both the objections from the Maryland Municipal League and from the uh, Maryland Multi-Housing Multi Association. Both of, the, uh, both of those objections have been addressed in the amendments. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Delegate Holmes. Delegate Otto. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, my question was, I got confused when you talked about visual inspection versus video inspection. I mean, the initial uh, uh, bill was about video inspections. So uh, what, what's changed there with the amendments? Uh, you, the, uh, sure. That, that request in terms of that word, that was a request from uh, the, Maryland, the uh, Maryland Municipal League to change that one word from, uh, from uh, video to I'm sorry, from visual to video. No, visual, no. That was their request for the, to change it from video uh, to visual. That was their request. Can um, I explain? Yeah, Delegate Healy, you, do you have an explanation? Uh, yeah, the, the MML came in and said that in some of the cases, they, they wanted to use the word visual. That would give them the opportunity to use a still camera rather than a video and it would be provide for more privacy for the people who may be living in the property as because they only want to focus on the thing that they're trying to inspect and not the whole property. Correct. So we'll gave them flexibility. Okay, okay Delegate Jalisi. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chair. So uh, my my question is, uh, and, 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 and apologize if this is not the same in all the other jurisdictions, but in Baltimore City and Baltimore County, the homeowner pays for the inspections, uh, the property inspections. So in this case of this bill, uh, if there is an inspection, whether it's video or visual, uh, who's the responsible party? Is the county or the city going to hire inspectors who are going to go and check this? or is the landlord going to take pictures and send them to the county? Uh, this bill- How does it need to work? This bill is not speaking to the payment requirement of the inspection. This bill only speaks to the process of the inspection. I, I understand, but at some point, someone will have to take these pictures. And I just want to understand, um, who is the responsible party? Who's taking these pictures and doing the visual inspection and then sending it? Uh, because as I understand, this is a complaint. So the scenario is it's a complaint filed by a tenant and for some, some conditions which are not conducive to um, living in the apartment or a house. So who's responsible for this? Well, in, in well, like, like I said earlier, this bill does not change anything that is in current law about who is responsible to pay for the inspections. So whatever is in the current scenario in terms of inspections is still in play. This does not change anything in terms of payment. This only talks about the processes that can be allowed to do the, the inspections. So if, if you have a contract, if you're, if you're, if your, your, your lease agreement specifies that inspections are going to be taking place and that the tenant is required to pay for these inspections, this bill does not change that. No, no, I understand that. I, but right now, the, the, in Baltimore City and Baltimore County, used to be that they would send inspectors out to check on any complaints by the tenants. Um, they may still do it, but the annual inspection is done by the landlord or the owner of the property himself or herself. So, so are we saying that when a tenant complains, the landlord is going to take these pictures of, of these situations, bad conditions, and send them to the county? No, the city? 
Or are they going to be hiring no, people it, to send out? No, I think I, it only I, makes I think sense Marvin, if they're a neutral party. There's Marvin, also Marvin, provision in here. There's also provision in okay. here where the local jurisdictions are requiring assistance from the department to have them give guidance on how these inspections are, are conducted. So that may address your concern about how Baltimore City and Baltimore County are affected by this because they have, they, Baltimore City and Baltimore County will be seeking assistance from the department on how to implement this program. Okay, I, I guess, thank you very much. Um, Delegate Love. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was going to bring this up um, when we were discussing the bill and not just the amendments, but I think the amendments play into it as well. The, the striking of video and substituting visual. Um, my concern is, is a, a privacy concern and how they are going to ensure that this information, um, I know they said it's not subject to the Maryland Public Information Act, but going from video to visual seems to be a very big jump. Um, and I'm, you know, at first it was an app on your phone and now this seems to be a lot broader. So um, Mr. Subcommittee Chair, if you could just help walk me through and, and allay my privacy concerns, I certainly would appreciate it. Well, the, the specific movement from video to visual doesn't change the privacy concerns at all. It's just that it allows for, as Delegate Healy said, uh, a, a wider range of opportunities. But that doesn't, that doesn't change anything. If, if there's a, that doesn't change anything relevant to a, a person's privacy at all. I'm not sure how that term changes anything. If I could. Yeah, go ahead. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, this was the, some of the small town, some of the towns came in and they said that um, they did not want to use video because a video camera takes in a lot more than they needed to see for them to make a decision about whether something needs to be corrected. And so actually making visual available to them gives them an opportunity to use a still camera instead of a video camera. And that actually would, if there were concerns for privacy, they, that would give the local inspector the opportunity to not invade the privacy of the residents who were having an inspector come into the place where they live to look at some kind of something that's wrong with the department and take a picture of it. This is um, just another tool, but uh, at, by making it from video to visual actually allows them to, to be more focused on only the problem and not the whole apartment and everybody in it and all that. Okay, thank you. Any further uh, questions, discussion or debate on this bill before we vote? Okay, we'll vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I am. Who's opposed? Jalisi. Jalisi is opposed. Anyone else? Okay, the bill carries. Um, the last two bills on our voting list are uh, motion unfavorable, withdrawn by sponsor. Um, House Bill 472, uh, uh, Delegate Young is, um, uh, is uh, withdrawing it, and uh, House Bill 475, Delegate Attar is withdrawing that. So I will entertain a motion of unfavorable for House Bill 472 and 475, uh, withdrawn by sponsor. Is there a second? So, second. second. Okay. Uh, okay, all those in favor of the in unfavorable motion withdrawn by sponsor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, uh, the unfavorable motion withdrawn by sponsor carries unanimously among those present. So 
Uh, we're going to come back at 1.30. I want to give you guys a chance to grab some lunch and relax a little bit. It looks like, you know, we're going to be on the House floor, and then we're going to be back here for public hearings. And so, you know, um, I don't have the list in front of me of what all the bills are for this. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, um, I guess I do. Um, yeah, I mean, we're not going to be able to make that much headway in if we uh, met a half hour early. So we'll be back here at 1.30, hopefully, uh, unless there's some Democratic and Republican caucus meetings at that time. So we'll see you at 1.30, hopefully, and hopefully the internet will work better. Take care. Oh, wait a minute. Um, yeah, uh, we're, uh, Trish, we're, uh, we're uh, adjourning from this Zoom, right? That's correct.